Hello, this is Parker with MacFab back with another tutorial about the PCB interface. Today we'll be looking at the Bill Materials tab. So once you've uploaded your Bill Materials files, that could be a EDA tool file or it could be a spreadsheet or a text file, uh, you will be able to mess around with the Bill Materials tab. And so we're going to be going over some of the features and highlight some of the important aspects of the Bill Materials tab. And so the first thing you see here at the top is the pie filters. And so clicking these will sort your bill materials by attributes labeled here. So we can see all our populated parts. We can see our form factors and you can also uh, select multiple uh, filters. And then clicking the X underneath each filter resets them. So here to the bottom left of the filters, we have the group actions for the entire bill materials list. And so we have, first we have ungroup, we, all, we have merge, we have DNP, and we have remove or delete. And so these are kind of like, they act on the high level line items. And so we can click, let's say those two guys right there, these two line items, and we can click DNP and it will DNP the entire groups. And we don't actually want to do that. Um, we can also ungroup, so we can separate C1 and C3 apart. So we've separated those two out, but we actually want those together since they're the same, lo same line item. And then we can also delete. And so if you delete, you'll get a nice confirmation is if you actually want to delete it, uh, make sure you want to delete it because there is no undo function and you'd have to add those parts back. And so we'll go into the line items now. So basically to expand the items, you just click the line. And so the first thing you see is the part costs. Um, since there is no part selected, we don't know what the cost is. And so let's go ahead and select the part. So we're going to search for this part and it auto filled out the search field based off my manufactured part number that I have filled out here. So we'll go ahead and select this guy. And so if we expand it, we can see the part cost. And because this is a house part, we don't have any labor costs for prototype runs, but so we can see the part cost for the entire overview. So this part costs a penny a piece. And since we have nine of them, we have nine pennies. And then we can also see a your price breaks over the quantity of this part here on the right. And then if we click the I button here, we can see all the part attributes that MacFab knows about this part. And then we can also manage individual designators. And so we can DNP parts here. Or we can move individual designators to different groups. So if I click this ungroup function, it will sp basically spread all these designators C2 to C15 out into their own groups. But let's say I just need to move C2 somewhere. I can click on this group assignment and I can either make it a new group or I can add it to another group that already exists. And then this op reopens the, the search functionality. So let's take a look at that pricing again. So we'll click one that is a market part here. And so we can see how it also has the unit labor cost. So this is a through hole part and three pins. So it's calculating out the unit labor cost. And then since we have two of these, it multiplies it by two for the total labor cost. If you need a part that we can't buy on the marketplace, you can use the source functionality to change between inventory and consignment. So they all default to turnkey, which means MacFab buying the part. But if let's say you've shipped these parts to MacroFab and we're holding it in our warehouse, you can click inventory and then you can select from your inventory here and it will calculate the total labor cost and unit labor cost for that part. Or you can do consignment. So consignment is once you've ordered the PCB, you have to ship us the parts. And so to do that, you need to enter a part number, select what kind of part it is, SMD or through hole, 
and how many pins it has. And we do require 10% overage on all consignment parts. So make sure you send your overage. So say if you need to add a part number or another line item to this bill of materials that's not in your original file, you can do so here at the bottom. So you have to add a designator. Designators need to be unique as well. I tried to add a R1 and uh, let's say manufacturer part number is MF uh, resistor 0805 100K. It's a 100K resistor. Package is 0805. It's going to complain about how the designator already exists. So let's go ahead and make like an R100 because I know there's not an R100 here. So it's added that to the build materials, but we're not done yet. So we need to add placement information about this part. And so how you do that is you expand the, the line item, click this uh, red triangle, and it brings you to the interface to add the information for this part. So let's say it's going to be it's X origin. So X origin and Y origin are like the centroid and the units are in mils. Uh, the X size, Y size is also in mils, and this is like the bounding box for the part. Well, this is an 0805, and 0805 parts are usually 80 mils by 50 mils. And then you can add a rotation for the part, whether or not it is on the top or bottom side of the uh, board, and if it's ST or through hole. Then add placement. And uh, we need to select a part. So we'll go ahead and do that, search and select. One further thing you need to do when you fill out your build materials is basically look for everything that is red here and and finish filling out your build materials. You won't be able to go further. You won't be able to place an order if you have build material line items that are red. So basically we need to select some parts for these guys. Let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, now we've cleared all the red on our build materials and it should be ready to go.